Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting mm, rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a brand new series of three bottles here. These are all called the Sailor's Home. Today I'm going to start off with the Haven, which is their single pot still edition. Then the next video is going to be about the Irish whiskey, which is the Journey. And last but not least, we'll end it off with the 10-year-old here, the Horizon. All right, very, very good. So what do we have here? Um, we have a new independent bottler, basically. So the Sailor's Home, I must admit that the branding and the corporate identity here is nice. So you have the S here, you have welcome searchers and seekers, comma, explorers and adventurers. So we have um, a guy, wait a second. Um, his name is... Uh, Cian Quilty, if I got that right, and he is in Limerick. So my feeling is that he is a serial entrepreneur. When I Google him, I find out he's been part of seven different companies, three of which are now bankrupt. Mm, who knows? Who knows? Um, or insolvency or have gone into administration or whatever. That was according to the financial records you can find online there. And he had a new idea. Hey, everyone's doing Irish whiskey. Let's do Irish whiskey as well. Bam, boom. And so you need a partner. You need someone who actually knows something about Irish whiskey. And I must admit he had a very, very good partner, Dr. Jack um, O'Shea. If I pronounce your name incorrectly, Dr. Jack, I'm sorry. I'm not Irish. I'm American. So now he, Dr. Jack, actually was one of the, he, I must admit, it's amazing. The guy got his um, PhD in fermentation and um, in, I think, 2000. I mean, the guy's actually, he's retired. He's almost 70. Um, he's a legend in the Irish whiskey distilling industry. So um, he joined the Irish whiskey industry way back in 1979. The Irish Alcohol Company, uh, which basically just produced natural spirits, um, or neutral, not natural, neutral spirits, um, for, for various Irish creams. Yeah, and Irish cream needs alcohol. Where do you get that from? Boom, you get that from the, the um, Irish Alcohol Company. So he did his um, bachelor's in biochemistry. Um, interesting. So he's a, the, an expert in yeast um, as well as fermentation. Then he went on to move to um, Altec. If you don't know Altec, they are also one of the um, service providers for products and for services in the global bev beverage industries, also then with a lot of yeast. And um, Altec was Pierce Lyon. So Dr. Lyon there. He was the person who set up the Pierce Lion Distillery before they were in the church in Dublin. So they took the Vendome st uh, stills from Louisville, Kentucky, brought them over to, um, to Ireland. Weird enough, the um, American company, Town Branch in Kentucky, uses then Irish stills, European stills, and in Europe they use the American stills. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Um, he supervised installation. He ran the process for many years. So all the first juice that we've tried from Pierce Lyons all came from Dr. Jack. He has been um, instrumental in the setting up of the Burren Distillery as well as the American Irish Distillery called Akil, um, both of which he continues to supervise today. So the Sailor's Home. The Sailor's Home is basically a building. Um, that was built in Limerick in 1856. Now, the first time I heard this, I'd been to Limerick. Shame on me. Um, but I didn't know, or I didn't realize, that shows how ignorant I am. If you look at the map, um, Cork, I knew. Cork is like this. Um, you have the, the Atlantic, and it goes in. And at the end of that river type of um, bay, you have um, Cork. And exactly the same thing is with Limerick. So that was maybe one of the most inland um, points that you could have that would protect you from the waters and so on. There's actually a port, and that's where the sailors would actually maybe winter and so on. Hamburg in Germany is exactly the same thing. Hamburg's about 80, so 50 miles away from the North Sea. So you have to go down the Elbe River, and it's big enough for these big container ships and so on. And they dredge the river a couple times a year so that actually they can keep on getting those big container ships down into Hamburg, which is... Almost a waste. You could just use the Bremerhaven instead, but 
we're not talking logistics here. So we have a good product, um, at least a good product design. And now one of the things Dr. Jack said, I watched a video with him and uh, another whiskey tuber together. And he talked about being at Great Northern Distillery so often that they actually offered him an office. Hmm. So this is probably going to be single pot still here from Great Northern Distillery. So what do I want to compare it to? I want to compare it to a different single pot still from Ireland that is also sourced. This is Glendalough Pot Still Irish Whiskey. And this was um, first matured in American Oak X bourbon barrels and then finished in a Irish Oak cask. Now, for those of you that are aware, um, I'm just going to review very briefly single pot still. What is single pot still? Single pot still is something that can only be made in Ireland. It is a mixture of unmalted and malted barley. Um, should be distilled on a pot still as well, and everything is okay. Now, I in Germany could actually take, for example, unmalted barley. I could take malted barley, put it in a pot still here in Germany, and then call it not single pot still. It is a geographical indicator. It is a protected name, just like bourbon. I could make um, a product in Germany here, 51% corn, rye, a um, little bit of malted barley, bam, put in a new ch um, charred oak container. And after a couple of years, I could call it corn whiskey maybe, but I can't call it bourbon. Bourbon is protected, single pot still is protected. So that's what we have here. What they do is actually, if I read the label again, is they actually, um, oh, I'll take this here. This is triple distilled malted and unmalted Irish barley. Congratulations on using Irish barley. Not everyone does that. And it's matured to perfection. <coughs> Not sure about that. In um, Irish, American bourbon and Spanish Oloroso sherry casks. So now on the nose, if I get a very quick whiff, um, I am talking, as you saw, it was microscopic, microscopic, microscopic quick. Um, I do get um, orange peel. I get orange peel and a little bit of an alcohol moment. 43%, 43%, very good. Any information about natural color or non-chilled filtered? No. No information whatsoever of that, about that on the bottle. Oh, I'm sorry, it says non-chilled filtered here, and I'm talking BS here. Non-chilled filtered, 43%, thank you very much. And triple distilled. Natural color is not on the label. At least I could not find anything here that says that. So thank you for saying non-chilled filtered. All right. Um, but then if I take a bit deeper of a breath. <sighs> Dr. Jack, you are an, uh, an expert of Irish whiskey. I don't know why you put your name on this bottle. I haven't tried the other bottles yet, but this is not yet ready. Personal opinion, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American. Same thing here. Same thing with Teeling with their um, single pot still. Single pot still needs some time for that pot still spice to develop in the wood. Um, red breast, 12 years old. You don't have a red breast, 5 year old. Why? There's a reason. Um, you need the time in the cask for those wonderful spices to really, really come out. What I get here, um, I get fresh mown grass that was wet. So if you ever have a lawnmower and you scraped off all that stuff and the gook underneath there, that's what I'm getting here, first of all. I have, of course, the orange um, scent on top of there. I do have a little bit of vanilla going in through there, but I do not have a wonderful moment where I'm going to go, oh, let's nose this whiskey for the next 20 minutes before we start enjoying it. So if I go over here to the Glendalough, also a non-producing whiskey company, in my personal opinion, they do make their own gin, but they source, as far as I'm aware, all of their whiskey products. What a shame. Now here, what I get is an interesting note, but I get a lot of a oak tannin bomb. Um, this is over oaked in my opinion, which happens all the time when we start using um, uh, virgin oak containers made from Ireland or from Germany. Even some Spanish and some French oak containers are way overpowering at the beginning. Second fill, third fill, much better. Then you get the chocolate, you get the mocha, you get the stuff you want. At the beginning, it's just um, like chewing on a stick of wood. And that's what I get here. 
unfortunately. All right, 43%, let's try this. That's actually almost nasty. <laughs> My personal opinion. Um, ooh, it doesn't get better in the finish. Um, it doesn't start off great. Now, I must admit there is a sweetness that actually from start to finish that's there. I must admit that there that Oloroso Sherry that for me it's more of an orange peel moment continues from beginning to end. But it's almost like a peated whiskey where that peat smoke at the front is there and it disturbs everything else going on in the background. Um, and that's this young, green, grassy um, lawnmower moment here. Um, I have some official tasting notes. It says here in the nose I should be getting green grapes, warm spice, and honeyed oak. Nah, I get some oak, but I don't know if it's honeyed. Um, the taste, I should have a creamy mouthfeel. I must admit, it is creamy. The non-chilled filter to 43%. Well done there, guys and girls. Um, I get some pot spices. Very young pot spices. And I get some roasted almonds and vanilla. Don't get the almonds, do get the vanilla. And the end, I should have brown sugar with some black fruits. All right. I have no idea what the other two products are going to bring. Um, I learned the lesson very early in my whiskey career is I will buy a bottle once. I'll buy almost any bottle once. But the question is, will I buy a, a bottle again? A second, a third, a fourth, a fifth. Redbreast 12 um, year cast strength, I have bought six, eight bottles so far in the last couple of years. I literally love that stuff. Will I buy another bottle of this? No. So I buy bottles, I do a review, I do a bottle share. I Get out the gospel of this um, whiskey here. Is it good? Is it not so good? Something you should try, something you should buy, something you should avoid. And in my personal opinion, this is a taste of a D and a value for money. It's an F. I would not actually buy this. Now, if you want to try it, go ahead. Um, if you like the young pot stills that I mentioned from Teeling, from Glendalough, everything out basically else is going to be great northern distilleries. Um, uh, Dingle has a young pot still whiskey, which is almost there, but they have two years advantage. Um, they're getting there. All right, so very, very briefly over here. Mm -hmm. More of a vanilla from those American bourbon casks and a lot more of that wood on top. If I had to choose between the two every day in the week, this one, all right, shows a little bit my, my reference points here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Looking forward to number two and number three that I'll be doing about the Sailor's Home. And I'll be talking more about the brand and more about this um, Irish whiskey um, industry. All right, Whiskey Jason here. Thank you very much. Don't forget to share, to like, subscribe, and tell others. See you. Bye-bye.